An electrocardiogram, or ECG, or the Dutch or German version of the word EKG, is a tool used to visualize the electricity that flows through the heart. An ECG tracing specifically shows how the depolarization wave moves during each heartbeat, which is a wave of positive charge. And the way it looks depends on the set of electrodes you're using. This particular set of electrodes is called lead 2, for example, with one electrode on the right arm and the other on the left leg. So essentially, when the wave's moving toward the left leg electrode, you get a positive deflection. Like this big positive deflection corresponding to the wave moving down into the left and right ventricles. To read an ECG, there are a few key elements to keep in mind. One of them includes figuring out the rate and the rhythm. Now, there are a couple ways of figuring out the heart rate on an ECG. The first one is called the box method because you count the number of box between heartbeats. Each small box represents 0.04 seconds, and each big box is 5 small boxes. So each big box is 0.2 seconds. So to calculate the heart rate, you can count the number of small boxes between R waves since R waves are tall and pointy and easy to see on lead 2 of an ECG strip. You can find an R wave that has a peak that falls at the beginning of a box, and then count up how many boxes until the same point on the next R wave. So let's say that there are four big boxes and one and a half small boxes between two R waves. Since you have four big boxes, that means four times five small boxes, plus that extra one and a half small box, totals to 21 and a half small boxes. And that means that there are 0 0.04 seconds times 21 and a half, or 0.86 seconds between heartbeats. So the units here are seconds per heartbeat. Now to get something a little more meaningful, we can take the inverse of that, which is 1 over 0 0.86 beats per second, or 1.16 beats per second. Now, since there are 60 seconds in a minute, we can multiply this by 60 and end up with 70 beats per minute, which is the heart rate. Now, if the distance between two R waves is exactly one box, then the heart rate would be 300 beats per minute, which is really fast. If R waves are two big boxes apart, or 0.4 seconds, then the heart rate is 150 beats per minute. Three big boxes apart is 100 beats per minute, four big boxes is 75 beats per minute, five big boxes is 60 beats per minute, and finally six big boxes apart is 50 beats per minute. Remembering these numbers makes it easier to make a rough estimate of the rate. For example, if there are between 3 and 4 big boxes between R waves, then we know that the heart rate must be between 75 and 100 beats per minute. Another method to figure out the heart rate is to count the number of beats in 10 seconds, which is the standard length of time in the rhythm strip portion of a 12 lead ECG. So in this case, we can count 15. Since this is a 10 second interval, all you have to do is multiply this by 6 to get the heart rate which would be 90 beats per minute. The reason this little trick works is because you have 15 beats per 10 seconds. And again, to convert to per minute, you multiply by 60 seconds in a minute. Looking at this, we see that 60 divided by 10 equals 6 per minute. So 6 times 15 is 90 beats per minute. If the heart rate is too fast or too slow, it could be because something other than the SA node is pacing the heart. For example, there could be atrial flutter, which is when an ectopic focus in the atria, like an irritated atrial cell, starts to spontaneously fire between 250 and 350 depolarizations per minute, with only one out of every few atrial depolarizations passing through to the ventricles. To calculate the atrial rate, you can use the same methods as before, except you look at P waves instead of R waves. If one P wave starts on a heavy line, and the next P wave starts in the next heavy line, or 0.2 seconds later, then again you've got one beat for every 0.2 seconds. And multiplying by 60 seconds in a minute, you get 300 beats per minute. You could also remember that nifty trick where one big box is equal to 300 beats per minute. Another situation is atrial fibrillation, which is when there are multiple ectopic foci in the atria that start firing all at once. The atrial rate here can increase to 350 to 450 beats per minute. 
In this situation, only the occasional firing of an ectopic focus that happens to be near the AV node is able to make it through and down to the ventricles. In this case, the ectopic foci fired too quickly for the atria to be fully depolarized by any one of them. So there are few, if any, actual P waves. Without P waves, there's not a reliable method of determining the atrial rate just by looking at an ECG strip. And the heart rate's really just an estimate. Because at this point, the heart's just sort of quivering. Normally, on an ECG, one waveform with its P wave, QRS complex, and T wave looks just like the next one. Almost like they were just copied and pasted one right after another. And that's how a regular rhythm looks. An irregular rhythm, on the other hand, is when there's any change in the appearance, sequence, or timing of those waves. To help identify an irregular rhythm, you could look to see if every part of the waveform looks exactly the same, which would include the P wave, the QRS complex, and the T wave. If not, it could mean that there's an ectopic beat, meaning that it might have originated from an abnormal spot in the atria or ventricles. For example, this first P wave is deflected upwards, and the second is deflected downwards, which would indicate that it's an ectopic beat. Alternatively, an odd-looking waveform might have originated from the normal spot, which is the SA node, but then gotten thrown off course, which is what happens when there's a block someplace. In this example, there's a bundle branch block, which is where the signal can't go down one or both of the bundle branches, and this usually results in these wide QRS complexes. Next, you could check for changes in the sequence of the waves most often involving the two depolarization waves, the P wave and the QRS complex. You can look to make sure that there's a P wave before every QRS complex, as well as a QRS complex after every P wave. For example, if there's a premature ventricular contraction like this, then there might be a QRS complex without a preceding P wave. On the flip side though, if there's a third degree AV block, then there might be a P wave that's not followed by a QRS complex. All right, as a quick recap, one quick way to estimate the heart rate on an ECG is to remember that one big box is 300 beats per minute, two big boxes is 150 beats per minute, three big boxes is 100 beats per minute, four big boxes is 75 beats per minute, five big boxes is 60 beats per minute, and six big boxes is 50 beats per minute. To help identify an irregular rhythm, you can look at the morphology or shape of the waveform and make sure that there's a P wave before every QRS complex, as well as a QRS complex after every P wave. 